One of the critical pieces to identifying a soil is to talk about the particle size distribution of that soil. So what's it made up of and, and how do we characterize that? If we've got this chunk of earth and now we want to turn it into something that we can quantify, how do we do that? Well, we, uh, the, typically we'll take the soil and it'll have these little grains. And these little grains, um, we want to sort them. And we want to sort them and quantify what fraction of the, of the mass is made up of different size of grains. So the most natural thing perhaps to do is take our soil and crunch it up and put it through a set of sieves. And these sieves are specified by the opening that they have. And so then we will take a sieve that has large openings at the top and go successfully down to a sieve that has very small openings at the bottom. We put our broken down soil into the sieve and then we shake it. We weigh the sieves prior to shaking, after shaking, and then we'll take the amount of material found on each sieve and report its mass. And that's called a sieve analysis. That's all fine and well for the sand class of particles, but anything finer than sand, and this goes down to 100 microns, anything smaller than sand, which would be a silt or clay, won't ever settle through the sieve. So what will we do then? Then we'll take what we call a settling analysis in the traditional methods. So here, we're gonna take one liter of water in a beaker, and we're gonna take the particularly the non-sand um, fractions. And so what happens here is that what, is the, what are the things that fell through the bottom of this sieve? We're gonna collect those, and we're gonna dissolve them in water and have them in this one liter vessel. We'll shake the vessel up, and now what's gonna happen is we'll have these particles distributed throughout the water. And what happens to particles that are, that are, are suspended in water? What happens is they wanna settle. So, what is the typical density of a, of, a, of a mineral? Well, minerals have densities, so for instance, quartz will have a density of 2.65 grams per centimeter cubed. On the other hand, water will have a density of one. So we can see then that the the quartz is denser than water, therefore it'll settle down through the water column. So, which particles settle most quickly? The biggest ones. The biggest ones because they have greater buoyant force downward, and so the water will move out of the way and the particle will settle down. And that is controlled by what's called Stokes' Law. And really, you don't have to know Stokes' Law as much as be able to look up in a table uh, the amount of, of, of material that's settled and then as a fraction of time, and we'll be able to then back out the, uh, the particle size distribution using the standard kind of tabular uh, data. Okay, so we have this settling column. Now, how are we going to measure that which is settled? What we're gonna do is put what's called a hydrometer in there. And a hydrometer is a really neat little thing where it basically has a bulb that settles below the water surface, and then it's graduated so that if the density of this solution is high, the bulb floats high. If the density of the solution is low, the bulb uh, sinks. And so by tracking exactly the height at which this, this um, hydrometer By tracking the exact height of the hydrometer in time, we can know the density. And by knowing the density, we can see what fraction of these particles have settled out and thereby get the particle size distribution because the large particles left quickly and then in time, slower and slower settling particles drop out of solution, giving rise to an ever um, kind of asymptotically 
uh, the final water uh, uh, density. So this is the hydrometer method. Another way we could have done this is actually put in a little sampling pipette We could put a pipette in there and draw out samples in time and actually s and then dry those samples and see what's, what is in the solution. Once again, assessing the density um, in time. So it's fundamentally the pipette method and the, and the hydrometer method are trying for the same outcome, that is to get the density of the solution in time and thereby get the particle size distribution. So now we have this particle size distribution. What do we do with it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make a a plot that has percent mass small, uh, uh, smaller, and then we're going to have the, the size here. So what we're going to do is say, okay, we at for the very smallest size, this is going to be the smallest particle, and this is going to be the largest. Okay, so what we know is that 0% of the sample will be smaller than the smallest one, and 100% of the sample will be smaller than the largest. So what you'll end up with is a curve that spans the smallest to largest size, and then at any given point, we can identify for this size, which let's say is 0.1 millimeters, that would be a typical size, we can say, aha, that 50% of the mass of our, of our sample was made up of particles smaller than that size. And we will then call that the D50. And D50 then says it's the diameter of the particle for which half of the mass is smaller. So this is how we take a, a, a soil break it down, identify the different constituents in it, and then plot them up in a particle size density plot and identify things like the D50. Another thing that people might identify would be the D10 or the D60. And why would they do those? Because the uniformity index is defined as the D60 divided by the D10. So when we have a very uniform soil, this will be on the order of two, and for a very non-uniform soil, that'll be as high as 10. So we would call that the uniformity index. So what we've taken is a natural soil that was completely you know, heterogeneous and, and, and mixed up, We've broken it down, we've put it into a table, into a simple plot, and we've gone to the point of identifying one parameter, the uniformity index, which tells us how, how broadly spread the particle size is, and another parameter, which tells us what the average particle size is. And these are really the most reported parameters for this, uh, this sort of measurement.